Strange Wills. Stories of Strange Wills made by strange people. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor Warren William. And featuring Lorene Tuttle and Perry Ward. With Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. And the original music of Del Castillo. I devise and bequeath to my heirs the seven deadly sins. Hate, despair, envy, pride, anger, lust, and jealousy. And here is our well-known star of stage, screen, and radio, Warren William. These are the stories of strange wills last wills of strange people, so that no reflection can fall on any person or persons, living or dead. Names, places, and time have all been changed. From the yellowed pages of the probate files, we bring you unquestioned proof that truth is still stranger than fantasy. You'll see what I mean in just a moment, but first, here is a brief message from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Midnight on the Moor. Have you ever walked along the moors of Scotland at midnight when the fog, thick blue fog, swirls out of the ground and covers you like the shroud that covers the dead? Through the blanket of fog you can hear sounds of eerie night creatures that bring fear of things unseen, fear of the bog, that carry the reward of slow, agonizing death. In the heart of this moor country is the quaint little village of Perth. I'd never heard of Perth before the moment I decided to stop over the night on my way to Stonehaven. The little inn seemed bright and cheerful, the proprietor friendly, and <laughs> I was tired. But news, I learned, travels just as fast in Perth as in any American community. Somewhere along the wee hours of the night, Yes? Uh, y yes? Well, just a moment. Mr. O'Connell, I hate to awaken you at this hour of the morning, but you have a visitor. A visitor? But I don't know anyone. Well, just a minute, please. I'll be right out. Now then, Angus, you say I have a visitor? Aye, Mr. O'Connell. It's the Mistress McClanahan. She's from the McClanahan Castle over in the moors. Where is she, Angus? In the palace, sir. Uh, but please, sir, be careful. People shy clear of the McClanahans in the castle. Why is that, Angus? Five years ago, there was a tragedy. Young Moffat McClanahan disappeared into the night and the fog, and he was never found. And ever since, people tell us strange noises coming from the moors around the old castle. It's haunted, they say. How oh, very entertaining, Angus. Show me to the lady, please. Aye, hey, sir. This way, sir. I beg of you to come with me, Mr. O'Connell. My father is in desperate need of help. He must write his will. But, Mistress McLennan, I'm not a barrister. I have not the right I to... know, I know. But there are no lawyers, no barristers in all of Perth. Please come, sir. Very well, young lady. I'll dress and be with you in a moment. I'll do everything I can to help. In just a matter of minutes, I rejoined Anne, and together we started on our trip to the castle, ten miles inland. 
Her horse seemed to know just where to go. I can't see a thing. Is the fog always as thick as this? Aye. Around Perth, as soon as the sun goes down, the fog comes out of the ground. It keeps people indoors at night. They're afraid. Aye. I love it. If I didn't know that the hounds of the Baskervilles were purely fiction, I'd almost... They're wild dogs. Moor dogs. People seldom see them. They run only at night and disappear at a daybreak. Oh, they sound depressing. There's an old superstition that they draw people into the box. A slow, silent death to those unfortunate enough to... Good heavens, can't you tell? Don't you know where they are? No, Mr. O'Connell. Until you make one false step. And then as you try to lift one foot, you get caught with the other. And then slowly, slowly you sink. Sink deeper and deeper. Well, I certainly hope your horse doesn't. Oh, get no, off the road. he knows the way. But heaven help the stranger who walks the moors alone at night when the fog comes down. I'd simply say, Anne, heaven help the stranger. And that includes an American lawyer by the name of John Francis O'Connell. I agree, Mr. <laughs> O'Connell. Yes, I agree. Heaven help you. What? I knew then what it means to have that get-out-and-walk-home feeling. The fog was so thick I could barely see my hand in front of my face. Nor was that all. We were going through the bogs, slimy, bottomless sinkholes. And here I was, riding next to a young girl, who asked that heaven help me. And as I listened to the strange sounds all around us, I agreed. Anne, look over there. It looks like a blue haze coming out of the fog. You see it? Oh, yes, we're getting near the castle, Mr. O'Connell. That light has been burning from the tower every night. Every night since my little brother Moffat disappeared. Father lights it to let you know where the castle lies. Angus McPherson, the proprietor of the inn, told me there'd been a tragedy. Would you tell me about it? Of course, sir. It's common knowledge. You see, it happened five years ago. There isn't much anyone knows. Moffat and I had adjoining bedrooms. Sometime around one o'clock in the morning, I was awakened by a noise in Moffat's room. Moffat! Moffat! What was that noise? Moffat! Are you all right? Ah! Father! Father, help! Help! Anne, Anne, why are you screaming? What's the trouble? Moffat! He's gone. Moffat is gone. And nothing was found? No clue? Nothing. Next morning, Father took a searching party through the moors. They found footsteps leading into a bog. But that was all. Well, here we are at the castle, sir. I'll take you right up to Father. And if you can find my hand, I'll help you down. Oh, thank you. Now then, just take hold of my coattail and follow me. My life is only a question of hours, Mr. O'Connell. That is why I sent for you. You must help me either to find my missing son or... Or bring his murderer to bay. I couldn't rest in my grave otherwise. Anything I can do, of course, but uh, I know so little about it. Hey, all of us know so little. A cry in the night, an open window, footprints leading to the bog. But that's not enough, Mr. O'Connell. Moffat McClanahan is the last of a great line. If he dies, so does the illustrious name of McClanahan. A name that meant honor and bravery since 1707. So, Walter, tell me what I can do. I have a plan, but I want no one to hear it but you and I. Where is the last Anne? Why, she went to her room, I believe. Good. Then we can talk as man to man. O'Connell, there are four people who might have kidnapped or murdered my son. The first on the list is my housekeeper, a Miss Grayson. She always thought that my son was a barrier to my marrying her. She came into my service shortly after my wife died almost 15 years ago. 
She took care of the children, was a splendid mother to them. But she resented Moffat, hated him because she saw that all of my love and affection was centered around him. She's still with you, Sir Walter? Aye. To have discharged her might have meant the death of my son, should he still live. Aye, Mr. O'Connell, you shall meet her in the morning. But be on your guard. She's sly, artful, and, and dangerous. I'll be particularly careful, Sir Walter. Then there are three others. Two brothers who are in the line of succession for my title and estates, should my son be dead. And lastly, my nephew, Harry, the black sheep of the clan. Uh, he'd sell his soul, that one, for power and a title. I've tried to cry find the criminal for, for five years, but he's always slipped through my fingers. Well, if I can't find the guilty one in my lifetime, then Mr. O'Connell... I swear I'll do it from my grave. I swear it. Yes? I have a breakfast tray for you, sir. Oh, yes. One moment, please. Now then, come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Miss Grierson, sir. The housekeeper of the McClanahan Castle. Oh, yes, Miss Grierson. Sir Walter mentioned you last night. He did, eh? That's more than he's ever done to my face. He complimented you highly. It's not time for him to be complimenting anyone. Him with a black angel hovering over his bed. How is Sir Walter this morning? <laughs> you can't kill a Scotsman that easy, Mr. O'Connell. He's enjoying a hearty breakfast in bed, same as you. Miss Grierson, this afternoon, if your duties permit, I wish you'd show me around the neighborhood. You see, I'd like to see the bogs. The bogs? The bogs, Mr. O'Connell? Oh, no, no. I never go near the bogs. They hold death. A black, treacherous death. No one who falls in ever escapes. That's why Master Moffat is gone, sir. He died in the bogs. Aye, he died in the bogs. What makes you think so, Miss Gerson? I know. I saw footprints leading right up to the bog. Not is, sir. Not is. Hmm. What were the footprints like? I remember them just as plainly as the morning I saw them. Bare feet they were, sir. You could see where the toes squelched down into the edge of the bog. But you have no proof that those feet belonged to the abductor of Master McClanahan. No proof at all. But I know. I know. I heard the moor dogs barking from the bogs for weeks. They were there by the bog, waiting, waiting. Oh! oh, Mr. O'Connell, Miss Grierson. I just came from Father's room. He's... he's dead. The death of Sir Walter McClanahan made it necessary for me to start out for Perth immediately to carry out the plan that we had worked out the night of my arrival. Anne arranged that I could have the use of the same horse and carriage that had brought me to the castle the preceding night. At least I felt secure knowing that should I by chance be forced to return after sundown, the horse would bring me back safely. Arriving in Perth, I went directly to the inn. Mr. O'Connell, welcome back to Perth. I uh, trust you had a pleasant night out in the moors. The moors were terrifying, Angus. But this morning, Sir Walter McClanahan died. And I must notify his heirs at law to be present for the reading of his will tomorrow night. Aye, Sir Walter did. That'll bring out the vultures, his brothers and his nephew. They've been waiting for years to get that castle. Aye, Mr. O'Connell, there's not a gentleman in the lot. There's bad blood in the McClanahan line. There is murderous blood, I call it. 
trust no one, Mr. O'Connell. No one, if you value your life. Part two of Midnight on the Moor will follow in just a moment. And here again is Warren William. By the time I had reached all the heirs at law of the deceased, made the necessary arrangements with the minister, and taken care of other prearranged matters, it was sundown. The fog was already coming in off the moors in heavy swirls, blotting out everything from sight. It was after dark as I started my return trip to the castle. I gave the horse a free rein and hoped for the best. I thought of a lot of places I'd rather have been at night than on the moors. Fog. Fog and cold. You can cut it with a knife. Are you still there, boy? Want to come back here with me? Once upon a midnight, really, while I pondered, pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping. Suddenly there, there came a tapping, tapping as a... Ooh! Well, what's that? Whoa, boy. Whoa. Is someone there? Hello. Hello. Is someone calling? Where are you? Just a minute. Stay right here, boy. I'll be right back. Hello there. Here. Over here. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Whoa, come back here. Come back here. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Here I am. <laughs> that voice. I know that voice.
I heard the gallop of the horse flying away in the far distance. I was trapped. Trapped by the murderer of Martha McClanahan. I got down on my knees and felt round for the little road that I'd been on a moment before, but it was gone. I was utterly lost. Ahead lay the slow death of the bogs. But I had to go on. I had to get back to the castle. I knew now the murderer of Moffat McClanahan. Step by step, each one could be my last. Then once more I heard the voice. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. oh, I was trapped. I tried to raise my foot, but the other one sank deeper into the mire. It was as if... A great suction pump was pulling me down, down into the very bowels of the earth. Help! Help! I'm sinking down into the fog, in the bog. Help! Help! Dear brethren, we are all gathered here this night at the Castle McClanahan in the last tribute to the late departed Sir Walter McClanahan. In Mr. O'Connell's absence, I will take upon myself as minister of the gospel the duty of reading the will. According to the wishes of the late deceased Sir Walter McClanahan, the coffin is to be opened and his heirs at law will respectfully take seats around the coffin. Will you please wheel in the remains? Hey, right here in this room. Yeah, that's fine, lad. Thank you. And now then, will you please remove the cover? Sit it right over near the fire, please. With the five of you, please draw your chairs up to the foot of the coffin. Oh, how ghastly. Must we sit here and look into his dead face? It was his wish, Mr. Son. He was a peculiar one, my brother Walter was. Ever since that night when Moffat disappeared into the fog. Uncle Andrew, must you bring... I'm sorry, lassie. 
I cannot help but think of that night. It made of him a madman. He always said that he would find the murderer of his son before he was laid to rest. This is his last chance. His last chance. Now that we are all properly seated according to the wishes of the departed, I shall continue with services in the reading of the will. <clears throat> to my heirs at law, one of you is a murderer. One of you is responsible for the death of my only beloved son. But be not secure in your perfidy. Your sin will find you out. My title and estate must under the law pass on to my oldest brother, Andrew McClanahan. Should he confess to the murder of my son, Moffat? Ah! He set you up! He set you up! Sir Walter McClanahan is arisen from the dead. He's pointing his finger right... Stop her! Stop her! She's breaking away! Let me be! Let me be! Or I shall kill... Kill all of you. Yes. Yes, it was I. I who killed Moffat, my own brother. And for a good reason, too. No love was ever given me. Only to him. I was jealous. Hurt. I carried him to the bog. I threw him in. And then I came back, got into bed, and screamed. <laughs> and now I shall join Mr. McConnell and Marvin. You'll not find me there, Anne. Your plan to destroy me failed. You... You too? Back from the dead? No, Anne. Not back from the dead. Back from the living. To help trap a murderer. Try and trap me. All of you. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> Stop her. Stop her. Stop her. She's running out to the bogs. Nothing can save her. Anne. And stop! <laughs> May God have mercy on her soul. Warren William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story of Midnight on the Moor. But first, here is a brief message from your announcer. Here again is Warren William. How did I come to suspect Anne? Well, when I left for Perth, only two people knew I was going, Anne and Miss Grierson. I knew from my conversation with the housekeeper that she feared the bogs, even in daylight. But Anne was a strange creature. She knew and loved the bogs as well as her father. When she lured me away from the carriage and I walked into the bog, I did so intentionally. I wanted her to think I was dead. The next night, I called on an old actor friend of Sir Walter's to help me. Under the cover of darkness, we slipped into the castle, and a few minutes later, the actor became the dead image of Sir Walter McClanahan. Well, you know the rest. Under the eerie candlelight of the room, Sir Walter McClanahan came to life to point a finger of doom at a lovely young girl in whose heart was the deadly sin of jealousy. <laughs> Next week, I have a beautiful story to tell you. A young man was given the opportunity of inheriting an industrial empire or a ticket to Paris. This young man wanted to study art more than anything in the world, but he knew that if he chose Paris, he would not only suffer privation and want, but he would also lose the love of his beautiful, young, and rich fiancée. What did he do? Well, listen to the story which we call... Seven Flights to Glory for the answer. This is Warren William inviting you to listen again next week. Strange Wills is written by Ken Crepine and produced by Albert Ulrich. This is a Tellaways feature produced in Hollywood. <laughs>